This is Wells Tech, a weekly show exploring the intersections of technology and ministry. Your hosts are Sally Draper and Martin Spriggs. Wells Tech is produced by Wells, the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. Welcome back, everybody, to Wells Tech, episode 509, recorded on Tuesday, August 8th, 2017. This is a little show about technology and ministry, and uh, Sally and I are in our normal positions today. I in uh, Waukesha, she in New Ulm, Minnesota. How are you, Sally? I am very good, Martin. Uh, happy to be joining you. Happy to come down from all that Senate convention excitement. It was a busy week last week. It was, yep. And we did a show right there from the floor, thanks to mm -hmm. uh, uh, Lee Hitter and team for um, allowing us to do those. Uh, it's kind of fun just doing interviews. Uh, didn't mm -hmm. have to do a ton of prep, but we got a lot out of it, and hopefully you all did as well. Just uh, interesting people we uh, brought to the mic, and uh, it's an interesting week in general if you've never been even if it's just a visit it's nice to sit in and watch our synod at work there every couple of years uh, casting direction figuring out uh, what way we should the lord would like us to go and um, one of the neatest parts as i think we mentioned last week was some of the um the neat people that you get to meet and mm -hmm. some of the fellowship uh whole church bodies coming into fellowship with our with our little synod as well. That was uh, was maybe the highlight for me. Definitely. There's a little tech talk in the midst of things. I had a few people um, mention that they use the online uh, or the mobile app and the, the mm -hmm. yearbook that's available online, things like that. So it's always good to connect with people that maybe we've only known virtually through the podcast community and right, uh, right. get to see them face to face. Good. Well, we are in the midst of our summer series. Uh, we kind of took a little break last week, but we're back at it this week with ministry resources. So, Sal, you and I tag team a little bit. You take a week, I take a week. We pick a ministry resource that we focus on. We write a little blog post about. Sometimes we record a video. Uh, we feel that it's worth sharing and something that is worth your consideration, especially uh, if you're in a position where this tool might be uh, be a sweet spot for you. And I have a feeling that the one that you're going to share today, a lot of people might be interested in. Well, we'll hope so, Martin, that it becomes a blessing to people. Um, I will share my screen and say that we are going to talk today about a, a little utility, an online application, basically, that uh, is called Print My Cal. That's a companion product for Google Calendars. And so maybe a good place to start the conversation is to talk a bit about Google Calendars. Um, I'm a huge fan of Google Calendars, and I think um, it, it's many uses for um, me personally uh, spill over into uses and uh, effective um, calendaring for schools and churches as well. Um, one of the big strong suits of Google Calendar is that you can collaborate. So say Martin, we wanted to work together on a Wells Tech calendar. Um, I could share a Google Calendar with you. I could give you permission to, to view the things on it or to add and edit things on it. Um, or even to share it with other people if you had the super privileges um, related to the calendar. So you can imagine this in a church or school setting where um, the pastor and the secretary perhaps are sharing a calendar and keeping up with church events or the, the principal and all the faculty and school office personnel are sharing calendars and modifying all those many things, field trips and sports events and, and drama practice and whatever it is that's going on in those church or school settings. Things. Um, just becomes a really powerful tool. And then, you know, to take it a step further, you can share it on your website real easily. Other people that use Google Calendars um, can make use of it. So I, I think Google Calendar, a free tool, a tool that comes along with Google Apps or the G Suite, um, use it personally, use it um, in church and school settings. I think it's a win-win with Google Calendar. A couple of things that uh, are also nice features to have, I believe, are notifications. So you can get uh, email reminders or even pop-up notifications if you allow that in your browser. 
Uh, and also mobile friendly. So uh, these things can go on your smart devices and they look good and they're easy to to maintain even from uh, an iPad or a smartphone of some type. Yeah, gone are the days that the pastor out on his calls with his congregation has to get out his print um, calendar. He can actually look on the, the digital Google calendar for the church and, and make changes or updates right there um, from remote locations and things. So lots of power there with Google Calendar. Um, and I'm not here to say bad things about it. I think it's a great choice for churches and schools. I do think that Google has a bit of a weakness with Google Calendar, however, and uh, this probably plays into church and schools quite regularly because oftentimes you want to take what's stored there electronically on your calendar and be able to create a print version of it. And um, if you've played at all with printing Google calendars, I can actually show you uh, where the command is on my Google Calendar that I have up here. It's up here next to the gear icon under more. There's a print option and it pops up an extra window. I don't know that that would share easily, but um, pretty simple and basic print window. Um, the problem is you don't have a lot of control over how it prints and it does cut off things that are more than one line long. So um, your calendar can be pretty ineffective if it doesn't show the full description of different events on your calendar and cuts things off. Um, and unfortunately, that's just what Google's given us to work with. It, they don't have a lot of ways for you to download it and edit it or anything like that. And uh, that kind of led us to uh, seeing a way to fill that need by developing Print My Cal. So um, full disclosure, Print My Cal is something my husband programmed, and he did it when he was a parish pastor just so we could print our Google Calendar for our church um, newsletter, because that's something we mailed out every week, every month um, to our congregations. And so over time, it's kind of changed and improved, and I thought it was time for us to share just a little bit about Print My Cal um, once again. So I actually have it up on my screen and I thought I'd just do a quick walkthrough of how it works. Um, from the first page at printmycal.com, you're prompted to log into your Google account. And when you click the sign in with Google, you choose which of your Google accounts you want to sign into. And if you've done it previously and approved it, it'll go right into your saved calendars. Um, I had done it previously with my Wells Tech account, and so here I am at my design a page. If I hadn't done it previously, it would have prompted me, are you sure you want to share information with this application? So you have to approve that before you can get to the, the design a page. Now, when you're on design a page, you can change a lot of things about the calendar layout. Um, it is a monthly calendar view only, so we don't have one available for weekly printing yet, but um, you can make it portrait or landscape. You can control margins. You can even say you want your calendar to start on a different day of the week than Sunday if you want. Um, you can control fonts for the title, the weekdays, and the dates, and you can control column widths. And all of that can be saved by giving a title to your layout. So maybe you have one layout for um, one purpose and another layout for a different one. Uh, you want a portrait version and a landscape version or whatever it may be. You can add more layouts so you can come back each time you log in um, to Print My Cal and pull up those layouts and not have to reformat it each time. So that's all in the design a page. Um, step two of the process. Then you move along to step three up here at the top, and this is where you actually pick your calendars. Now, um, I'll scroll down the page a little, and you can see all the different calendars available on this particular um, Google Calendar account. Martin, I don't know how many calendars you have, but if it were my personal account I was showing it, it would be a really long list because you can have a lot of different calendars. I have things um, pulled into mine uh, let's see if I can stop sharing for a second. I have things pulled into mine like from Minnesota Valley Lutheran High School and from Martin Luther College. I have my favorite sports teams pulled into my Google Calendar. And so, um, and certainly I have my kids' calendars pulled in so I can see different um, things that they may need 
um, That's our assistance a good with. Tip too, I think to have separate calendars. If you if you ever think you're going to need maybe just to show a subset of content, mm -hmm. um, sporting events for the school mm -hmm. or drama or forensics calendars or those kinds of things. There's no harm in keeping those separate because you can always create views, uh, embeddable views that collect you know, the different calendars together and kind of make it a seamless experience. So when in doubt, I would say separate uh, rather than kind of uh, pushing everything into one, then you really don't have any options for thinning it down. Right. And just like you said, you can create views. You can you can mash together the different calendars for printing with Print My Cal as well. Mm -hmm. So views on your website or whatever, um, but also for printing. So our um, church and school office were managed by one assistant in the office. She was the church secretary. She was the school secretary, and she had access to both those calendars. But when she needed to, she could print just the school calendar or just the church calendar or the two calendars combined. And there's also a way to change the font and size and color um, of the um, different calendars with the font button that's listed next to each. So if you wanted to make your school calendar red and your church calendar blue so it would be distinguishable and you're going to print in color and stuff, um, then you can do that here. Um, I'll also show you up at the top of the page, and maybe if I zoom my, my browser a little, it'll be more obvious. Um, this section above where you choose to select the calendars to print, there's a nice um, set of options you can play with here, and it has a little preview to show you. So for instance, the AMPM indicator can be spelled out AMPM, or you can just use A and P, that saves a little bit of space on the screen, or you can even use a 24-hour format, like military time, where you don't have to have the AM or PM at all, so you have some options there. Um, the indenting, you can choose that everything is indented in line with the first line of indenting, or you can say no indent. Um, it maybe takes up a little less space if you say no indent, but it also may not be as readable, so that's up to you. If you want, you can even specify how many spaces it's indented. So, you know, it's really flexible in terms of um, how you want your indent to be displayed. And then other options that are available to you, you can align all the events. Um, so the indenting is all in one line. You can see if I uncheck that, they're a little bit tighter together, but um, the indenting is at different widths. You can include an end time. That was a popular suggestion from some who use the calendar. They wanted to be able to show the end times as well. You can remove all the extra spaces, and it just kind of pushes together the AM and PM, for instance, right there. And you can also, on the times, you can remove if it has a zero, zero. So 9 AM, um, 9 colon zero, zero AM became just 9 AM. So lots of options for you to do. Um, with your um, event display as well. Once you're happy with all those settings, then step four is the simple download. Um, it gives you a little summary of what layout and what calendars you're including. It has you choose the months, and it typically chooses the next month on the calendar for you because we're already into August. It picked September, but I could go back and print August if I want. I can even print a couple of months if I want. And then um, when I click the button to prepare the calendar, I get two options for my calendar. I can open it as a PDF or I can download it as RTF, which will open up in Microsoft Word or other word processing software for editing. So if you want to do additional edits or add some graphics or whatever it may be, you want to download that RTF version. Now I will tell you, if I download the RTF, I'm going to lose a lot of the font and color choices I've made. But if I just use the PDF once it's generated, um, it will keep those font and color choices. I, I really didn't change any colors, but I did change um, the font up here in the title area as an example with the layout that I had chosen. So um, two different options. And um, as I said, it's a web app, so you can get these same options um, from your iPad, for instance, from a laptop, from a desktop, from a Chromebook, wherever you want to work, um, these same options are available to you. Um, you can download the calendar in either PDF or RTF format. 
Very so, nice. Couple questions. When you first released this, I remember it being a Java app. It was. And yeah, that was okay. That's never that's never been kind of my favorite application, but it was necessary, I'm sure, to, to get some of the features in. Now it's a web app, which is much better. Um, you don't need to install Java or download anything. It's just you go to the site. When did uh, that switchover happen? Was that recent or a while ago? Um, I want to say it's been a few years that it's, but there was a period of time where we supported both yeah. and still had the downloadable available to people. Um, over time, though, it's been harder and harder to maintain that Java version. The, the software's changed over time, the way to install it, and the installer right. that he was using is not available anymore. And so we've basically completely grandfathered. Yeah, um, the, there's no real reason to use it. Or to right. Maintain it, so. Now that we have this. Do you have any idea how its usage? How well, we it do is? know. Um, page visits? Yeah, we do know page visits. We actually, I'm sure you noticed, have some advertising on there. So we do get some feedback from the amount of people that view the advertising. Um, and typically it really ramps up towards the end of the month and at the beginning of the month. Of course. But, you know, I think. Um, a hundred or so users a day is fairly common oh, nice. on the site. So it has got some traction. We've heard actually from people all around the world that use it. Um, they've written to Kevin on various occasions and stuff. And um, a lot of churches, but not necessarily Lutheran churches. We've heard from all different yeah, um, types. Really they're not specific to a church, although a church right. or school would have you know need of it. There are other organizations that I'm sure could use it. So Exactly. So, Very nice. yeah. I don't know if did we mention this in the book? Project Perhaps Next? we did at some point uh, when we were talking we about calendar about it or not, but we certainly should have. Mm -hmm. Very nice and totally free. Totally free. Does have the the advertising that just helps us keep the website up. So. Okay. Very nice. I like it. So uh, visit the show notes page for Sally's write up and a little demo that she has there as well, and. Uh, Give it a whirl, especially if you're using Google Calendar. Mm -hmm. Sally, we're going to let you keep talking and uh, go to our picks of the week. Yeah, I'm super excited about my pick of the week this week. Something we've had uh, uh, stirring around in our um, pre-launch uh, discussions, and now we're actually ready to commit and share information about our next conference um, for Wells Technology. Um, coupled with an education conference. So um, I have a little slide here to announce to you that our 2019 Education Technology and Leadership Summit is going to be held June 25th through 27th, 2019. So a couple of summers away still. And we're excited to say that it's going to be at the Kalahari Resort in Wisconsin Dells. Wisconsin and that is a very family friendly place a great vacation location so hopefully um, you guys have your paper and pen out and are jotting down uh, these dates and location and you can certainly expect to hear a lot more about it we have a hashtag already edtechlead19 and um, lots more good stuff coming um, as we work with the committee and plan for this next um, what was Wells Tech and Leadership Summit uh, or conferences from schools and from technology is now going to be one great conference with a leadership emphasis for, for both groups and other church leaders as well. So very excited about uh, that coming up at the Kalahari in Wisconsin Dells. Yeah, we're looking into keynotes at this point. We don't have those selected. And you should hear from us a little bit later on about a call for presenters or presentations. So we'll be looking uh, across the Senate for uh, people who are expert or expert-like in different fields. And this is a little bit different than just our Pure Technology Conference because it is uh, you know, kind of three-pronged. Uh, we have the leadership side uh, along with the education side in addition to just the pure technology stuff. So I think there'll be something for everybody. So make sure you mark that on your calendar. Looking forward to it. Uh, my pick of the week is um, a blog post. And uh, I think I had a pick not too long ago where I was talking about uh, Trello. Trello is a um, just a fantastic tool to 
kind of add to your project management arsenal, but it has other uses. And the blog post that I tagged is from Trello itself. They run a nice blog. And this ran across my desk the other day. It's called The Big Six, Essential Trello Boards for Every Business. And this translates pretty well into the business of church or the business of school. Um, any kind of organization. And uh, they talk about six ways to use a Trello board. And if you're not familiar with Trello, it's simply a website. Uh, the easiest way to describe it is a website full of columns or what we call lists filled with cards. And you can put anything at the top of the list, uh, just like you are maintaining a bulletin board of some sort. Uh, and you can put anything on the cards, any kind of information. They can be color coded. There can be stickers, there can be uh, dates, uh, text, attachments, all that kind of stuff. And uh, because it's so flexible, there are a lot of uses for this in kind of communicating the business of the organization, so to speak. And the six that they mention in particular are company overview. Um, so I can envision a church or a school doing the same thing, kind of a single place where anyone can view um, current projects or priorities, uh, those kinds of things. So at a high level, uh, they talk about a new hire onboarding. Uh, I could see this as maybe being useful for new member orientation. Uh, so put some cards together and some lists about the different things that a new member could get involved with or how things work. Um, uh, all kinds of things with new hires or new members, I'd call it. An employee manual. Um, I think that's uh, every organization would need that regardless of size. IT support. So you could rig up a board here to offer support if you especially are maybe the technology director at your school. This might be a way to uh, give a what they call a one-stop shop for keeping track of uh, IT or admin requests, uh, kind of a visual, they call a visual pipeline for employees to see the status of their requests. Um, so it's a good way to keep track and a low cost way because I think in many respects you could use the, the free Trello version to do most of these. Uh, they have a suggestion for town hall meetings, create a transparent company culture by holding regular company-wide meetings that are an open forum for anyone to ask questions or discuss what's on their mind. Could see that happening in a, kind of an open forum setting for congregation. And then the last one they list is a public roadmap, a great way not only to keep your team, but also users up to date on what is being worked on. And this we kind of referenced in the book that I referenced earlier, uh, just kind of keeping uh, the congregation or the school up to date on things that are kind of in the pipeline, things that you're working on. So so that everybody is very aware of uh, the, the ministries that are going on at your organization. So I thought that was a good multi-purpose uh, blog post that I think could be adapted for churches and schools or other Christian organizations. How to use Trello boards. Trello, awesome tool. Reminds me of our um, pretty common discussion of having a communications team. Um, and this would be great for them to consider areas where they can improve their communications because there's lots of good ideas there. Um, just to clarify, you certainly can use Trello for free. You have to create an account and a password and all those kind of things. But you can also um, share your boards publicly so that people can view them without having an account at all. Exactly. But if so you, you wanna, don't have if to worry you about If you want to participate password. in them, then you obviously need to log in, that kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it is nice just to make them. Um, so, okay, listen. give it a shot. The uh, next segment of our show is normally filled with community feedback, although this summer we've slimmed that down a little bit, but we wanted to slip in at least a quick conversation here, a question on the Wells Google Schools site. Yeah, over on the Wells Google Schools G Plus community on Google Plus, um, Gretchen Plitzweiss asked, about animation apps. And there were a few mm -hmm. ideas thrown out, including Powtoons. Wow, I hadn't thought of Powtoons in a while. Yeah. It's been around. Um, it even says here, 
42,423,000 Powtoons created so far. So you can tell it's been around for a while. Um, we've used it to create some fun videos and the animation process is pretty simple and straightforward. They give you a lot to work with um, and you can do it for free. There are also pricing, um, you know, staggered pricing depending on what your needs are, but it comes across as a very professional um, video and fun to watch with the animation. Um, Drew Willems suggested Animaker. I hadn't heard of Animaker, but it's animated videos done right. And again, uh, you can try it for free and do a very short video um, with their free service. There's also pricing um, to do longer videos and have downloads and things. Uh, and they have different ways that people are using it, like Animaker for infographics. So not just a flat infographic, but an infographic that rolls in the data and, and builds along the way. And um, typography, uh, handicrafts, 2.5D. So not just uh, flat images, but something that's got a little more dimension to it. So lots of fun stuff you can do with Animaker. And if anybody's used it and wants to give us a review, we'd love to hear it. Um, Gail Potratz linked to an article from Richard Byrne over at Free Technology for Teachers, where he uh, listed five apps, ABC uh, Animate, uh, Stop Frame Animator, Animation Desk, and that's an iPad app. Draw Island and Video.co. So, um, if you've tried any of those, I, I personally don't have experience. And the blog post is a little bit old, um, but it's funny because as I'm sitting here reading the blog post, I noticed the scrolling advertisement on the side that's called uh, that's linked to My Simple Show. And lo and behold, My Simple Show is another way where you can make videos um, with some animation. So there's just tons of options out there. And so we'd love to hear from our Wells Tech community if there are any that you've used successfully or um, done to create some creative things for classroom or church use um, with animation video. I know I read one quote that said uh, video is um, the method of communication for the future or whatever. Let's see if I can find it. Online video is the future of the internet. YouTube is proof. Now for your content, it's going to be, is it going to be a boring blog post or a fun animated video? The choice is yours. So. The future is now. Yeah, the future is now. Speaking so. of video, Sally, uh, we do have a featured video each and every week. Um, what was your selection today? <laughs> um, my selection, we'll make that clear, was a video with Martin Spriggs in it. Imagine that. So um, actually, there's a whole slew of them out here on the Synod Convention website. Uh, Martin teamed up with Nicole Balza, as he's done um, for several Synod Conventions, uh, to bring daily, actually, uh, several updates Twice per day, day right. mm -hmm. um, uh, from Synod Convention, and all of them are very, very interesting to, to listen to and get some insight into the different speakers and activities um, that were going on at Senate Convention. One of my favorites featured, um, I want to say his name is Michael Herbs. Is that right? Reverend Michael Herbst, yep, from He was uh, Germany. from Germany, yeah, uh, and the church, the church that we're in fellowship with in Germany. So um, kind of uh, challenging because there was definitely a language uh, barrier there. He speaks English, but also um, needed some help with some of his English along the way. But I think he did a great job, and it's just fun to to see um, the mission and not just a mission. He's not a mission. He's from a foreign church body and to see the activities going on in their church body. So that's just one of many videos that are available. Um, from our Synod Convention updates. And so check them out and enjoy our um, our brother from Germany as well. Yeah, that was neat. And uh, yeah, Nicole, Nicole and I played actually a pretty small role. We just asked simple questions. The exciting part about the uh, the interviews were the answers and the guests that we had. So if you, they, they do provide kind of a good overview of some of the highlights from convention, uh, although there's all kinds of other um, content on the Synod Convention website if you're interested in what went on in uh, Watertown while we were there last week. So mm -hmm. 
Uh, Sally, we're going to come back again next week and uh, continue our focus on ministry resources. I'm kind of excited to share some work that we've done on a called worker compensation calculator, which was the topic, one of the topics at Synod Convention. Uh, just kind of a new tool that's out there that allows congregations, schools, and call workers themselves to uh, to take a look, a fair look, a balanced look at compensation and all the components of it, and hopefully in a more make sense, easy to use way. So tune in next week, and we'll have all kinds of other stuff next week, especially if you want to contribute something, go to wellstech.wells.net. We would love to hear from you about an animation tools or any other thing that uh, maybe you're getting ready for the new school year, um, something that you found to be extremely helpful in your ministry, or maybe even a ministry resource of your own. So go to wellstech.wells.net or send us an email, wellstech at wells.net. We're on all different kinds of social networks. Uh, it's not hard to find us, so join the conversation. Sally, I think that's going to do it. Uh, thanks to everybody out there for joining us once again. Um, and we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.